Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. So I, a while ago I posted a reel on Instagram on how I, not how I did these tequila nails, but basically a short of me creating these. I actually did this video all the way back in May, so it's been a while. So if you hear me stumble over my words or I'm not quite sure where I'm at in the video, um, well, it's because I recorded this a long time ago and I may not remember the sequence of events, but I did try to watch it back before I did my voiceover to kind of remember. So here I'm just showing you the gel polishes that I used, of course my Melody Susie, and I love this Vintage Nude by Pink Jalak. I also use this Your Sublime by Madame Glam, and also the, one of the Born Pretty Neon Ice Jellies to do the lime. It is the perfect color for lime. And so I did one hand off camera and then I recorded how I did the other hand once I had my system down. I'm also going to be using my McCart rhinestone glue for the raised part of the lime. And in this part, I am just showing you what this color looks like and it's pretty much one coat coverage, but I do two coats and it's just so gorgeous and it's a full cover nude. So you don't have to worry about, um, curing or sorry, <laughs> it cures really well, but I do cure the second coat for two minutes because the first coat cures in 60 seconds, but the other one I do for two minutes. Otherwise it can wrinkle when you're using this gel polish, but I think it's absolutely beautiful. And like I said, it's, it's full coverage really with just one coat. So yeah, this is what the first coat is looking like and it's just beautiful. Um, the other, my other favorite and upcoming gel polish line is Melody Susie. I have been using these for a few months now and these are absolutely one coat coverage. Like you do not need more than one coat for the white, the black, any other color, unless it's intended to be a jelly color. Um, I really, really love their polishes and I recently reviewed their plant-based gels, their Fleur Wee gel polishes and those are just as lovely and there was actually a really pretty nude in that collection as well that I really love. So yeah, um, this the, their gel polish line and it's also affordable. It's only like $10 a bottle, which if you think about it really isn't that crazy um, for a good quality gel polish. So I definitely care these for 60 seconds as well because they are so opaque and they're also a little more on the thick side. So now we're getting into the lime and this part was actually the easiest. So the lime looks very intricate and detailed, but I was able to do this part of the design a lot easier than I was able to do the tequila nail design. That took me forever and you will see that obviously here in a little bit, but this video is longer. So I appreciate everyone who hangs out with me for the full duration of this video. I am going to try, um, not to not talk through this entire video. So you'll probably hear music um, between different points and different parts where I don't feel like it's really necessary to explain what I'm doing. Um, but right now I am just going in with the rind of the lime and around the edge of the nail. I am just so amazed with how well these turned out. My customer was, I did make these for a customer and she was like, these would have been so cute for Cinco de Mayo. And I was like, oh, well, I could still make them. Um, they don't necessarily have to be for that, but they are tequila nails and it is a, a really cute idea. So on the pinky and the thumb, I decided to do a little bit of a different design with the lime and kind of go up the nail in a Frenchie. And there are a couple things I would have done differently with this nail. And sometimes I don't know why I left certain things in this video <laughs> for so long or without speeding it up. But part of it is to kind of show you what it looks like in real time and how long it actually takes to do nail art like this. I also left a couple of areas where I made mistakes and how I cleaned those up and different things like that. Um, I think that's also part um, an important part of the process because by the time we finish editing, we could leave all of the perfect parts in there and you know, make the video look really nice and all of these different things, but that's just really not the reality. These things take a really long time to do and sometimes things are more technically challenged than others. So this was actually my first time like ever doing like these 3D, um, uh, excuse me, fruit nails. And so I really, it really took me a while, but I try to think everything through before I actually do it. So that way I don't have to do it more than once. <laughs> um, now I'm just going in with that little light piece that is around 
fruit. Um, like if you cut open fruit and like on the inside where it's just a little bit lighter than the actual rind itself where it's darker on the outside. And this really just gives a lot of depth and dimension to these fruit nails when you do this. You don't have to, but it just looks really cool and it makes it look really nice. So after I go around the cuticle where I already drew my first line, and also keep in mind this does not have to be perfect because on the inside of fruit, the veins and everything are just kind of everywhere. Um, so yeah, you do not have to do this like just a complete straight line and make everything even. Um, sometimes I do things like that for aesthetic reasons, but I just think it makes it look more realistic when everything is not perfect. So um, there was also a video, uh, there was a tutorial that she sent me on Instagram, and I will make sure that I'm, you know, of course, putting everything up on the screen as I'm going through this to kind of show you what I'm referring to. But they are, but I got my inspo mostly from that set on Instagram and it's been so long since I've done it I don't remember her name so I'm really sorry but um, I do like to give credit where it's due and so now I'm just going in and I'm determining on how wide or how thick that I want those veins to be quote unquote on the inside of the lime if you were to cut it in half so I just kind of draw little lines at first kind of as a guide on where I want it to go and then I'll go in on the middle of the nail and I'll put my little dot um, and kind of start dragging these lines and I'm right now I'm just counting because I want to make sure not necessarily that it's an even amount I'm just trying to make sure that it matches the other nail um, that I have already completed and that they look similar so I don't you know I just don't like my I don't want my customers walking around with wonky mismatched crazy nails kind of thing so I was just kind of making sure they both have similar or the same amount in that regard um, when it comes to the design of the veins on the lime. So yeah, I, I had a blast doing this for the first time. Um, it did take a while, but it turned out really neat. And I, again, now I'm going in with the dot in the middle, and then I will drag all of the lines that, like the longer lines that you see down towards the dot. After I am done doing all the lines and I'm happy with where the lines are, then I go in and do the little starburst in the middle because again, on the inside of the fruit when you slice it, it is a little brighter in the middle where everything meets each other and where it comes together. So, um, and this was also in the inspo video. So I just went ahead and made it as close as possible. And you'll see when I start doing the 3D effect that it will help kind of smooth this out and it won't look so, I shouldn't say so bright. It's kind of nice that it looks kind of bright in the middle. Um, but it will help smooth some of these like crazy lines and I know the starburst looks really big um, in the middle as well but you'll see how it all comes together here in a moment so I just went ahead and put some of my rhinestone glue on my palette um, because I knew that I was going to use a brush um, for this part to help with the 3d effect there is a very technical way that I did this part of the lime because I wanted it to look more raised like towards the outside and I wanted it to be more thin towards the inside. So I'm just gently taking my brush and I'm putting a dollop of it and kind of spreading that out the width of the 
um, triangle um, at the top. And then I'm going to very gently drag it down towards the middle, but I'm going to make sure that it's really thin right in the center because I don't want a super thick glob of rhinestone gel in the center by the time I'm done doing all of the um, different sections, if that makes sense. Like I don't want it to sit and pile up. Um, I, you can do or probably get away with doing one or two of these sections at a time, but for me personally, I was caring for a full 60 seconds um, in between each. Now, some people only care 10 seconds, 30 seconds, so on and so forth, but I just feel like if you're constantly taking gel products in and out of the lamp, then they could have issues with caring. So for me, I just personally like to cure it completely um, for 60 seconds. So this is what it looks like when I am done with all of my different sections and it just looks so cute and I absolutely love the way that it came together. So yes. Um, and you can see here I'm showing you like on the tip of my brush what it looks like. So before you go in to do the next section, like there's that big dollop right on the end of my brush of that rhinestone glue. And then again, I'm just very gently dragging it towards the center. So yes, this um, technique is, is actually quite simple. Like I said, the lime nails were so easy to do, but when it came to doing like the little teardrop looking things, uh, You'll see that here in a while. I had so many troubles with that. Um, and so again, on the pinky, I um, don't know why I didn't do this part first on the pinky and the thumb. For some reason, I decided to go in and do the Frenchie part afterwards um, after I decided that I wanted to I, I don't know. I don't know what I was thinking in my mind, but I just made it more hard, a uh, lot more hard for myself. And what I should have done is actually do the Frenchie first and then do the green jelly and then so on and so forth. But like I said, um, I decided to challenge myself and make my life more difficult. So I did two coats of the pink gelac <laughs> um, on the pinkies and I also did the same things for the thumb. And then I just go in with that Your Sublime color around the, excuse me, around the Frenchie to kind of just make it an even line. Um, and then I go in with my, with the, um, lime nail design from the center of the pinky and the thumb at the bottom and pull it up. And you'll see that here in a minute as well. So I did end up getting the rhinestone glue just a little messy around the cuticle or around the Frenchie part. So I did go in with this fine grit cuticle bit and I just kind of went around, um, went around the Frenchie part and I made sure that the rhinestone glue wasn't covering the nude polish um, and made sure I got all of that off. And then again, yes, like as I explained earlier, I do go in with your sublime around the cuticle area. Not to cover it up, but just to make it look neater, um, cleaner. I'm not, I don't want to say I have OCD. I've never technically been diagnosed with it, but when I say like I want everything to be as perfect as possible, that's what I mean. I mean, you have people, you know, if, when you have obviously customers and consumers, I mean, you have people paying for these nails. So, I mean, <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's not like you can just, oh yeah, hurry up, sloppily, you know, do everything, throw everything on and send them out. You know, I, that's just not, it's not in me to provide that quality of service. I, I want it to be the highest quality, the best quality, the least amount of mistakes possible. And so that's just me personally. And I want to make sure like they're picture worthy <laughs> um, and definitely so I can have quality pictures and different things like that. I really did enjoy, enjoy doing the set, but I mean, it made me so frustrated to the point, like even my fiance, he came in and he did a really good job. And I wish I would have got a picture of it, um, of these nails right here with the Frenchies. Um, but I just, he did a great job with the design. But for me, I was like, it's still not perfect. It's not centered. The lines aren't right. Just let me walk away and I will come back when I am ready. Um, to tackle this because I couldn't figure it out 
and I was like ready to throw these nails against the wall. Like I'm not even kidding. I was just getting so frustrated and, and I, I just really had to take a breather. So sometimes that is okay. When you're doing nail art, it is going to frustrate you. It will frustrate you to the point of no end because you're looking for that perfection or you want it to look as good as possible or as realistic as possible. And it just will send you um, to different places when you cannot achieve that. Um, so um, just walk away, take a breath, take a breather. Don't hurt anybody or anything. <laughs> Um, cause it was really a challenge, but watching him do it actually did help me gather myself and be like, okay, um, this is what I want to do and this is what I need to do and things like that. So, um, yeah, anyway, I am here. I am just doing the Frenchie part. So you can see I painted my Frenchie line and then I'm going to go ahead and take my brush and fill it in. So this is probably the easiest way, whether you have long nails, you're doing short nails or anything like that. For me personally, I like the filling it in with the brush so it is also more level. And um, I notice as well when you try to fill it in with the liner brush, which is something you absolutely can do as well. But when you're doing it or filling it in with the liner brush, it goes on really thick. And sometimes I have trouble with my gel polish curing all the way when I fill it in with my liner brush. So filling it, filling it in with the actual gel polish brush, brush if you're not using liner gel, um, is absolutely one of the easiest ways. So. Just like in the inspo, I did go ahead and go around the Frenchies of these nails as well. And it just kind of tied it in like with my thumb and my pinky going around with your sublime, like around the Frenchie. Um, so yeah, I wanted this as thin as possible. So I just started with a little dot in the center where it will more than likely be the thickest part. And then you just drag it from one side to the other from that dot. And um, doing the white first, of course, gave me a really nice guideline. I try to do everything as clean as possible and get my lines just right. So that way, when I am going in with additional details, such as this one, that line is already there. And I know my Frenchie is already straight. And the line is, you know, um, when you're going over it with the other color, it's going to uh, not blend. <laughs> um, I guess there's not that ridge there, right? You don't have that ridge or that excess. And so here I was just showing you that this is the design that I was trying to create um, on this nail. And I will go through and show you how, of course, I did every or try to show you how I did every piece of this. Um, this, this nail, I think out of all of them, this wasn't even the most challenging one. Um, the most challenging one is the one with the little tequila sign in the middle, which I did record that as well. And you'll see that here in a little bit as well. Um, but this line work, I just had to make sure that I used a really, really thin brush. So that way, as I'm using the gel polish, um, I use this method a lot where you just put like a drop of gel polish where you need it. And then you drag that gel polish where you want it to go. Because if you try to just go in with a thick line or, you know, you might paint the drop too thick at the end and you don't want a thick drop at the end, like where you're trying to pull the gel polish and things like that. So for me, it was like to just start in one stationary point and then yeah like I had those little lines at the bottom they I had them going up way too far and so I had to start all over again so <laughs> I, I, I these nails took me a really long time to do but I am really glad that I pulled them off so you can see I finally got it the way that I wanted to and again I'm showing you my brush and how the gel polish kind of pulls away from the tip of the brush um, for whatever reason it doesn't matter what liner brushes I've used in the past um, it always kind of like pools on the brush but then it will go like I don't know it will kind of roll back like that little point um, it says staying at the tip of the brush your gel pol polish will kind of pull away from the tip of the brush and then it just kind of yeah so 
it doesn't go where you want it to go is what I'm trying to say. Or when you're trying to make the line thinner as you go along, it will actually make it look thicker where you don't want it to because your gel polish has pooled in a different area. I found what works best for me is to, you can one, either use your palette, which is why you saw my palette was all messy with a bunch of different lines going everywhere because I was constantly like cleaning off my brush and making sure my line was as thin as possible um, and that I didn't have a ton of product on my brush. And you can see I'm just going in with super thin lines Lines. and then I will grab a little dot of gel polish and put it at the end to make that end a little bit thicker where I want it um, and that way you can control the product a little bit better and also after a few lines um, I wouldn't say after like every two or three lines or every design, you know, um, but like after I did the tip of the nail, then I went ahead and wiped my brush with a lint-free wipe and alcohol. And then after I did this little part of the design that I'm doing right now, like the flower looking part in the middle, then I go ahead and wipe my brush again, um, with alcohol. So I'm not constantly, um, putting chemicals on my brush because I don't want to ruin my brush, but this is my OG, like it's excuse me, it's a 12 millimeter brush and these are some of the better liner brushes that I've started out with and I absolutely love them. I still have this one out of all of them. I have two left. I have the eight millimeter and the 12 millimeter and this one I have cut down. I do cut my brushes to, um, so I can have uh, more control over them, should I say, and again, how much product actually gets picked up with the brush so that I can do a little tiny fine details like this when I'm doing my nail art, um, especially when you're doing character a nail art and you're outlining them and you want to control how thick the line is and maybe be thicker in some areas or thinner in, than in others. You can outline, the, outline them really thin and then come back in and fill it in kind of like how I'm doing with these little, um, this little flower floral design from the Classe Azul bottle. So yeah, this, there's so much involved <laughs> in nail art and sometimes it's really hard to perfect, but I really hope that you guys are enjoying today's video and these little tips and tricks that I'm dropping, if they even make sense. I'm trying to find the best way to explain them, but it is really hard. Um, so yeah, basically just keep, make sure your brush stays clean in between each stage and you know, you want to be able to control your product by how much product you have on your brush rather than having it pool up everywhere. So um, that is kind of my hint trick tips um, to help you with nail art if you are interested. It's just uh, on these sides, th these, this part was really easy. So it was really easy for me to do the sides because for whatever reason, it's easier for me to go from left to right when I'm doing nail art, kind of like how you write on a piece of paper. If you're right-handed, you're going to go from left to right, just like you read a book. It's easier for me to do my brush strokes in that, um, at that angle and at that, like the same way that I would write on a piece of paper. But when I'm trying to go from left to right and like pull like from the corner of the nail down and things like that. It's so hard for me for some reason <laughs> to get that angle correct um, because it's like I'm writing backwards or I'm drawing backwards. And so it just feels really weird. And so I do have my own struggles and challenges with nail art. So please do not think that I don't. Um, it's definitely not easy. But this is the nail that I was talking about that gave me the world's biggest headache. And the reason why is because it was so hard to get them symmetrical. You do one nail and you're like, whew, I'm great. But nail art is like the definition of insanity, right? You just keep doing the same thing over and over again. <laughs> And sometimes it's like, oh my gosh, I feel so crazy. Like I did it once and then you're like, oh man, now I have to do it again. The first time it was perfect. And now this time you might not have as much luck the second time, or you might not get it to line up as easily the second time. So again, this is where you're going to see me just erase this design like three or four times trying to get started and just figure it all out. Like this is like, oh my gosh, I don't know if I have it in me. And so I actually had to wait until I had time to sit down to do the entire design on both nails because once you're in the groove like it's easy to just continue and keep going but when you have to stop and you have to quit and then you don't know and then it's just like oh my gosh like I am telling you this was so hard to do and like I said it looks like the easiest nail the easiest nail that to do but it was the hardest like I, I couldn't get it <laughs> Um, I was like, I just kept doing it again and again and again, but I am the type of person 
where eventually um, I am like, okay, now just sit down and do it and do it right. And you can't erase anything. And then that like prepares me to like just do it correctly and, and have it look really pretty. So <laughs> that's just how I, how again, how I operate. But at the same time, when I liked a line, then I would cure it. Um, and sometimes it did help me carrying in between every single one of these lines and just going line by line. So that way I had a guideline for the next one. And I knew if I had to wipe that line off, then everything else was cured underneath of it. And again, I always cure my gel polish for 60 seconds. Um, so yeah, just keep that in mind. Um, always cure when you feel like you need to cure in the UV LED lamp because you do not want to erase all of your hard work, right? So I left this in slow motion and just showing you guys again, like how long each little part can really take, right? Um, not slow motion, but real time. <laughs> real time feels like slow motion because most of the time I speed up my videos or cut a lot of things out, but I really wanted to dive into nail art today and different things that kind of help me be successful with nail art and possibly could help you be successful with nail art as well. So again, you're just going to see different bits and pieces and different cuts and different angles and things like that. And so I'm just going to let music play for a little bit and I will be back in a minute. We're almost to the end of the video and doing this little guy was such a struggle as well, like the little thing in the middle. <laughs> oh my gosh, I couldn't really get those as identical as I wanted them, but I got them as close as possible and I was happy with it. So um, at the end of the day, I just really love the way that this, this set turned out. I mean, it took a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, but it was so worth it to me. And of course, I'm going in with my Patty Gel top coat because it is literally so shiny and it is a really good top coat. So um, it's on the thicker side, which I really like that as well. So it fit really well and nice into these grooves of the limes and just kept everything really sturdy um, and really strong. And I just think they're so cute. But I want to thank you all so much for being the best part of my channel and for hanging out with me for this entire video. I know it was really long again, um, but there was so much to do and so much detail in these and it's been taking me a while to get this out and I'm just so happy that I finally have. <laughs> it's over now. Um, but um, yes, I couldn't help but share these just because of the amount of work and I know that these are really popular and trendy right now and that you know, a lot of people are wondering either how it's done or maybe you just enjoy watching nail art videos and I can appreciate that. So again, thank you all so much for being here and I will end with my reel that I have posted on Instagram and TikTok and I believe maybe even YouTube short and I will see you guys in my next video.